We're gonna make a short video here on the M60 operating rod assembly, the different variations of this, um, some of the design changes that have occurred throughout the years since this was first designed in 1957 or 56, um, and why some of those changes were made. All right, we have a bunch of different operating rods on the table. We're gonna go over them. We're gonna go over what the differences are between them. Before we do that, we wanna have an understanding of uh, the components on this because every operating rod, whether it's the first generation or the newest, consists of several different components to put it together. So, you know, we have the nose of the operating rod, which is on the front. We have the body, this long shaft, and we have the tower in the back. This is all threaded on together. So this front end is threaded on here, torqued on hard, and then pinned. And the same goes for the back. This tower is threaded on hard and then pinned. And then of course we also have a stud, a roller, and a retaining pin for that. Um, for reference, here's a tower that's not installed on a unit. You can see the threads in the back. Um, all the rollers and stuff have been taken out of there. But that kind of gives you an idea of how that goes on there. These towers aren't necessarily interchangeable. In other words, if you wear one of these towers out, you can't just put a new one on, which is what people ask. And the reason is these are all clocked on differently. So the way these are made is, you know, this, before any of these cuts in the bottom are made, they'll torque this on. And then once the tower's torqued on and they have it perfectly straight in the jig, they'll make these bottom cuts. So if you try to put a new tower on, a lot of times it won't sit in the same spot. Anyway, that's just kind of like a brief uh, synopsis of the different components that make these up. And all of them have the same here. So what we're gonna start with is just the very first generation here. Um, this is just a standard Sako Defense uh, operating rod. This one's new old stock. And um, the big difference that we want to take note of compared to all the others is this sear notch in the bottom. There's one sear catch in the bottom of this. And um, what they were finding was this sear catch was rounding. And there's a number of reasons why this rounds. But... If, if you don't have a um, heavy, complete trigger pull on this, the sear does not fully depress. And if the sear does not fully depress, then that notch on the operating rod is cycling and rubbing on this thing. So this is how it sits um, when the sear is catching this and it's locking this to the rear. And obviously when you pull your trigger, it allows this to pass forward. So um, with this single catch on here, uh, once this edge starts rounding, the operating rod goes bad because once it's enough materials rounded off there, you just get a runaway gun. The sear's not gonna stop the operating rod um, from cycling and also these sears wear out too you can see on this one if this will focus there's a lot of uh, wear on the back of that you can see it's kind of like mashed in round a little bit so with this initial design they found that just having that single sear catch could be problematic and um when they designed the M60E3 in 1985 is when it went into service, they incorporated a second sear catch here. Okay, so this is a E3, military issue E3 operating rod. And um, you can see the difference here. It has two sear catches instead of one. Now what that second sear catch does is it's a number of reasons. One, it adds a second uh, precautionary layer if the gun is um, 
short stroking, I want to say, uh, and it'll still catch it. Or if you don't rack it far enough, it'll still catch it. And also, if your primary sear catch wears, this will catch on the second one, right? Or if the timing of your trigger pull is so perfect uh, that you release as it's between sear catches, it'll catch the second one. It extends the service life of the operating rod, and it was found to be a really uh, good um, addition to it. Uh, one other difference that we'll go over here from our standard is you can see the profile is slightly different here. This has a straight profile on the standard one. This E3 one, uh, you can just see it's just a little different. And there's some weight reduction there with the thinner profile and less material. Same performance, just some weight reduction with this, and that's why we see the different profile. I don't have the very first generation operating rod that was ever made, but this nose is different on those, the, the shape of it. And um, I don't have one for reference. The E3 operating rods are great. We can see this discoloration on here. Um, it, what that is is heat treat. There was a lot of emphasis that went into heat treating these sear catches. It's not as prevalent on this standard one, the heat treat. Um, so with this second catch added and, and now when this came out, they had millions of rounds through these to use as a basis for design improvements. They really wanted to harden this metal. So uh, this is still a current issue unit, this two notch. Um, however, uh, they did come out with a three notch and it's the same premise. It's uh, you have just a third layer of uh, safety. If, you know, if you miss your sear, if your sear misses there, it'll catch there. If you miss the second one, it'll catch a third one. And I think the thought process is behind that is why not, right? It doesn't structurally compromise this unit in any way to cut a third catch in there. And it's just another safety layer. Um, the Danish military is using these uh, operating rods and their E6 guns and they run all three-notch op rods. I think that was a requirement that they wanted. So um, this is another M60 E6 three-notch. You can see that this has a different metal finish on it. Um, so we'll just really quick go over how these were packaged for the military. Um, just some different packaging. These are all USGI, and this is how they would have been issued. So, this one was made in 04, not that old. These are all three, uh, I'm sorry, all two notch. So, just some different packaging, what, what the military would see as they were issued. Um, one other difference I just want to make you aware of, if you see it so that you know what it is, some of these noses on these will have a hole in them. This is a standard single, single notch operating rod, uh, and it just has a hole in the front. And it, it's, you may think to yourself, well, that looks different. I think um, what that has to do with is just more weight reduction, right? Anywhere you can make reduction in weight, it adds up to the overall weight of the gun. So some of these have a hole in them. They're military issue, just like anything else. Um, and it works just the same and totally fine. The last thing I wanna go over here is, is a very neat item that I acquired. This is one of the last operating rods made by Sako Defense. What they were trying to design, which never came to fruition. And this is a rollerless operating rod tower. So they wanted to eliminate this roller on the back because this 
is a weak point. These rollers crack and break after enough material um, gets removed. So this is a prototype. It still has the tag on it. M60 operating rod designed without roller, one piece. I got this from a gentleman that bought this directly from Saco Defense Plant when they closed in 1997. Just thought it was really neat. Um, just a different look at what Saco was trying to do when they were uh, making improvements to this. So again, that's just a short video, just going over the operating rod and the differences between uh, the various designs over the years. All of them work great. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, more sear catches are better, um, but there's nothing wrong with these originals either. Uh, so either way, um, they, they all wear out, the towers wear out on all of them and it's good to have spares. Whether it's a single notch or double notch, or triple notch, spare off rods are important. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate uh, everyone's support. I can't say enough or emphasize enough how much um, the M60 community has, has uh, surrounded me and given me their business. And it's been life changing for me. Um, thank you. And uh, that's it.